Hello everybody, welcome back to the Music Gauntlet channel. I hope you all are having a wonderful day so far. And um, what the hell is this album? I think everybody, including myself, was expecting this project to be decent to good, but I, I, I almost have no words because I cannot believe how much I do not like this project at all. I promise you I like Drake's music. I'm not somebody that just hates on Drake all the time and wants to come for him for releasing a mediocre album. Like, it's awful because I hate albums that waste my time. I hate albums that I feel like at the end of the project that I just wasted my time listening to the album. And this is an hour and a half of Drake saying basically nothing. And I know he's basically said nothing before on his albums, but there was a certain nuance to it. There was a certain structure to his projects that was a little lost on Scorpion, but it's just, there is nowhere, there is no structure to anything on this project. And the songs themselves are either lame as hell or corny as fuck. He literally got Future to say, too sexy for this like I heard the sample in the beginning of the track and I immediately audibly said, no way, he's not doing this. And sure enough, he took, I'm too sexy for my shirt and then flip that into a different song. <sighs> How do you do this? How do you do this? How do you make an album this bad? That little baby song was by far the lamest song I have heard this entire year. She said, I'm a lesbian. I said, me too. <laughs> No. And then he's saying Daddy's Home like this is an Usher Raymond song on Poppy's Home, dude. No. Daddy's home. What is happening? Drake, you you are not this corny. You were never this corny. You were corny, don't get me wrong, but never this corny. Like this is this is what it would sound like if somebody tried to make a nothing was the same or a take care and if they were like spoofing Drake. It's like Drake spoofing himself. And let's just say for argument's sake that that's what he's trying to do for this album. It still wouldn't work because he's not self-aware enough about it. And I genuinely don't believe that's the direction he wanted to go in. At least with like Logic's Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, you could pick up on some, you know, songs that were supposed to be a little self-mocking, but it still wasn't good, but you could tell he was trying to do that. On this album, I think Drake's trying to make a mockery of himself, but I can't really tell because I think he's got too big of an ego to actually follow through with an idea like that. I think he's talking about too many real subjects on this project, like his beef with Kanye and how great he is. There's too many nods to how professional and great he is for this to be an actual spoof. So I'm left with thinking again, what the hell is this album? <sighs> This was so mind numbing, it's painful. Like at least bad albums can be bad and entertaining, but this was so mind numbing and it didn't even have the decency to be less than an hour. It was nearly an hour and a half. I'm just, I'm, I'm just gonna to say, say it. it. Scary Hours 2 was definitely better than this. I'm sorry, hate me if you want, but it was. He literally had the potential to make one of the hardest songs of 2021 with 21 Savage and Project Pat, and he chose that lame ass motherfucking beat. Are you serious? Bruh, like tell the vision had a better beat than that. This man really said, I'll play it cool, then mark somebody like Copenhagen. You gotta be shitting me. And I know, I know Drake has had corny lines like that before, the toying with it like Happy Meals, you get green like Earth Day, I know. But it's a lot like Kanye West making that Buzz Lightyear bar on his Donda album. Cornier lines from these artists are expected because they have spat them before. But when you're surrounding yourself with mediocre music and then you spit a mediocre bar like that, how is it not gonna stand out like a sore thumb? I would rather listen to Donda 10 times over before I came back to this album and that's on God. Then on the one salvageable song with Rick Ross and Lil Wayne where thank God for Lil Wayne because he actually revived this album for a second, the man proceeds to say he's actually Michael Jackson. God, stop. Stop. No more, Drake. No more of this bullshit. You know, you'd think maybe he'd, he'd be creative about it, be clever about it, say like, oh, Michael Jackson's living in my guest house like Freddie Gibbs did on the Bo Jackson album. But you know, he can't put that much effort into the music, guys. He has to stop somewhere, you know? I'll just compare myself. I'll just say I am basically am Michael Jackson. How about that? <sighs> all right, all right, let's 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 try and have a professional outlook on this project. Let, let's recalibrate for a second, something that Drake seems to be unable to do. It's crazy to me that this has about the same effort and quality put into it as his label demo tapes or his playlist mixtape, whatever more life was but he's labeling this as an album. If he just put like a demo tape, whatever, at the end of this, it'd be like, okay, all right, whatever. I mean, it still isn't that great, but you know, I can tell these were just Lucy's because he said they were Lucy's. But he's coming at us with saying, this is my return. This is my official LP I'm coming back with in 2021, the album Certified Lover Boy that I have put off for months and months and months, building anticipation for, and this is it. Like the production wasn't bad, but it didn't excel. The features were all right, but they didn't excel other than Lil Wayne. <laughs> his rapping at times wasn't bad. His singing at times wasn't bad, but that's just the main theme of the album. It's not 
horrible. I know I said it was awful before, but I genuinely don't think it's horrible. I just, albums that go about their business and act like they're the greatest thing alive when in reality they're just a complete throwaway from the artist just kind of pissed me off a little bit. The intro, Champagne Poetry, wasn't bad. I mean, it's, it's what you expect from an opening to a Drake album, a lot like Tuscan Leather. It's got those high-pitched, looped backing vocals. Drake going on about what's going on a little bit in his personal life and where he stands currently in the rap game. Solid, but an expected track on this album. I wish I could say I liked the Travis Scott and Jay-Z songs, but like, they're just extremely dull. I think he gave a very solid vocal performance and I liked the chopped up vocal sample on Pipe Down. I did enjoy that track. I don't know who Yeba is and Drake wasn't on that song at all, but that was one of my favorite cuts as well. <laughs> Not because he wasn't on there, but she was singing really elegantly. Reminded me of a Kali Ah, uh, I mean, You Only Live Twice was a very solid song. I thought everybody had a solid verse, but you know, I'm, I, there was that Michael Jackson bar that just completely took me out of it. The Kid Cudi feature was cool, I guess. I swear he just put some of these features on here just to make a jab at Kanye though, because like half of them were on Donda. Oh my God, I forgot to mention how terrible his singing was on f***ing fans too. That was, that was pretty bad. I was baffled by that one. It's just like everything you'd expect Drake to do on an album with a little bit of doo-doo sprinkled on top. I kept waiting to hear those gems of songs and there were like some in there, but then there was always some other element like uh, for instance on Knife Talk with that lame ass beat like there were songs that I wanted to like more, but there was something that was holding me back from that. I was just so bored. I made the poor decision of listening to this album for my first time at the gym, and that was not good. <laughs> because usually Drake makes pretty motivational music. I like listening to his music to amp me up for my day, to get me in my bag of feeling good about myself, to get me ready to just conquer the world, but I did not feel that at all on this album. It just felt like somebody was trying to be Drake and mocking Drake's style, but it was actually Drake doing it. I genuinely don't understand how anybody is saying this is a great album or album of the year or anything like that. I'm not trying to come off as a Drake hater, it's just that Drake severely underwhelms on this album to the point where it's barely worth your time. It sounds like he phoned in nearly every song with a few moments as exceptions, but rarely full songs. Drake has better achievements in his catalog, albums that aren't nearly as tedious and actually have motivation behind them. I'm not saying that Drake needs to come through with this grand concept to have a quality album, but if you're gonna come through and not say much, at least make it entertaining. I've heard a lot of these songs done better on different projects by him. Why would I want to listen to the joke that is way too sexy when I can listen to D4L off demo tapes? I get it, it was silly and stupid on purpose, but that doesn't make it a good song. Nonetheless, the countless R&B ballads that Drake has more than topped throughout his career. For nearly every song on here, I can point to another one in his catalog that's far superior. I mean, with this hindsight, it makes me fully realize just how much he was underperforming on this LP. I understand that you can only listen to older songs so many times before you want fresh material, but if the fresh material is going to be reiterations that are lesser versions, then I'm good, you can keep that. I genuinely feel like Drake needs to recalibrate the direction of his music. I'm very much to the point where it feels so stale to me. In the end though, I'm just glad other people are enjoying this project, whether that's for the hype or genuinely liking the music. I'm sure I'll get lambasted for this rant and opinion on the project, but I couldn't hold back. This project just really rubbed me the wrong way. Maybe it'll grow on me, maybe I'll end up appreciating it more down the line, but for now it stands, in my opinion, as one of the weakest hip-hop releases from a major artist. Please do keep in mind though that this is only my opinion and what I think about the record. I would love to know your guys's as well. And as far as my ranking for Drake's projects overall, I would have to say Take Care is still my favorite. Then followed by If You're Reading This, It's Too Late. Then Nothing Was The Same. Thank Me Later. Views. More Life, Scorpion, Dark Lane Demo Tapes, and yeah, the Certified Lover Boy and last. I, man, I, I just, I really do not like this project. It left no impact on me whatsoever. Like I said, this is just my opinion, so I'm curious to see where this ranks in his discography for other people. I'm curious to see if this is one of his top albums for people about mid-range. Either way, leave a comment in the comment section letting me know, or if you just want to let out that rage for me hating on a Drake album, feel free to do that too. If you want to also follow me on Instagram and Twitter, we can discuss this project there as well. I am more than open to that. And I believe that is all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way into the end. If you made it all the way into the end, you know I truly appreciate that. If you want to leave a like or subscribe, not sure how well that's going to work out after a video like this, but it would mean the world to me. And that's all I got. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Uh, and yeah, I, I just don't enjoy it. It's not an enjoyable experience for me.